Now, former Team GB Olympic swimmer Mark Foster is encouraging us to change our water behaviours at home, taking on a wild swim to demonstrate the volume of water that could be saved if we changed our water habits. Mark, how are you, sir? I'm doing very, very well, thank you. Very good. Thank you for joining us today. I'm about this, I'm in a hotel room in Manchester. This is not my normal backdrop, although it, it kind of kind of works. <laughs> kind of works for TV. It does, yeah. So first of all, Mark, I'm interested to find out about this uh, wild swimming challenge. Tell us more about that. Well, the wild swimming challenge was not so much a challenge; it's more of an awareness campaign, really. Uh, the challenge was getting me in freezing cold water. I mean, one of the things I found over the last eighteen months during this pandemic was ways of trying to keep fit and keep active having spent my life in a swimming pool the next best thing to do and the one thing that I've, I've sort of been enlightened to is is wild swimming so I, I got Michaela Strachan in a lake with me um it was it was kind of cold not too cold but kind of cold and we got in we had a swim with some ducks and some geese in a, in a in a lake in South London but it was more about raising awareness around water shortage than it was about anything else encouraging people to to use wild water swimming spaces but uh, be aware of the problems that we do um, face in this country well already i think that wild swimming is uh, catching on here in northern ireland because i'm seeing more and more people getting up at ridiculous o'clock in the morning to go and jump into helen's bay or go to port rush and uh, jump into the ocean every day there's hundreds of people at it there is more and more and the thing is you know we're an island nation so we're surrounded by water, but then the lakes and rivers in this country as well, we have a lot. Uh, and people always, you know, sort of one of these things, it's free, first of all, so why not use it? It's on your doorstep. Um, and it's one of these things when you do get in water, the, the, the sort of the sight, the sound and the feel of water against your skin is very, very good, not just for your, obviously for your fitness, for your blood flow, uh, but also for your mental health at the same yeah. time. So. I live on the beach in, in Essex and the amount of people I've seen getting in and out of that water, even over on Christmas Day, even when it was snowing, I love it. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't get a little bit too cold for me, but I've since getting in, it's one of those things that's really addictive. It's about, I talk to people about creating good habits, changing their habits and putting good habits in the way, in the way of bad habits. And it's amazing how quickly we, they become part of your lifestyle. Okay, let's talk about the campaign then. So why exactly is the UK's fresh water supply under all this stress then? Um, well, there's a lot of problems leaking pipes, um, the amount of water that people use. Um, it's one of these things, I mean, I get, ultimately you, you turn the tap on, you expect water to come out, but you don't realise where it comes from. Yeah. Uh, and one of these things that people have started using more water than they did, let's say, 30 years ago. Add that to the number of people on the planet, more and more people on the planet. Um, and we just take it for granted. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm guilty that, you know, when I, when I brush my teeth, I, I leave the tap going just because I can. But at the same time, I'm not aware of the problems I'm causing. So if you think of just leaving a tap running while I'm brushing my teeth, I think six litres of water go down that hole. And I probably brush my tooth between three and five minutes. Let's say four. That's 24 yeah. litres of water that have just gone down the sink. For what purpose? I mean, I'm only hurting the environment, ultimately. Um, so what we're trying to do is get people to make tiny little changes to what they do. And, and, and it's always one of these things. Ignorance is bliss. Awareness is sometimes a pain. And when you're aware of something, aware of what you're doing, you have a choice. You have a choice to make a change. So trying to get people to change their habits, take a, you know, take a shower, a short shower, rather than taking a bath, saves an awful lot of water. Um, using a dishwasher rather than hand washing. And I always thought hand washing... You know, dishwashers use a lot of a lot of water. They don't. They don't yeah. at all. Just by doing that simple thing, you you save about six thousand eight hundred liters of water a year. Wow. Okay. And I suppose at this time of the year as well, not using the hose pipe as well. If you're washing your car, use a bucket of water. Don't let that hose pipe run. Yeah, that's true. We've all done it, and we're all guilty of it. And I think so, I think statistically that saves two hundred and twenty liters of water, depending on how long you wash your car for. But that's an average car wash. Um, and when you put these amounts in, I mean, I've got here because I'm drinking water, but I mean, that, that, that's a litre a liter of water. And if you think 220 of them just from washing your car, it's a huge amount. And, and if the whole of the UK saved a quarter of their water usage, which is 33 litres of water uh, a day, uh, over a year, uh, we would save enough water to fill 30,000 lakes. 
You know, I'm not about mm. lot, lot Ness here, but, you know, a, a reasonable size lake, 30,000. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about this uh, Freshwater Pledge campaign. What's your aims for that and how can people get involved in that? Well, Finnish and WWF are, partnership, are partnershiping to replenish 500 million litres of UK fresh water in UK stressed water, water regions, I should say. And the campaign is to urge people to use water wisely at home. So I mentioned some of those things earlier on, and you mentioned them as well. You know, take a, take a shower rather than the bath, um, dishwasher rather than hand washing. Uh, don't leave taps running when you're brushing your teeth, taps running when you're washing your car. There's all sorts of little things that we do every day that we, won't, we don't realise how much big it makes in the long term. So that's what, raise awareness and get people to change what they do and go to... Um, Save water, clean, clever. All right. While I have you on the line now, we've got to talk uh, swimming because we've got uh, the Olympics. So what's your kind of predictions? How's Team GB going to do this year, do you reckon? Uh, I think as a team, as, as, a, as a nation, as a whole, and all the sports will we'll do incredibly well. Uh, will we beat America? Probably not, but we'll be up there and we start pushing them. Uh, in swimming terms, I can talk about that because I know an awful lot about it. Um, I'm going to be working for the BBC over the games, doing the live coverage. And we have got the strongest team I've ever seen for the last. I represented Britain for 23 years at senior level. And actually, so I've been involved with swimming for sort of four decades. And I've never seen a team look so good. Obviously, people will probably know, or they should know by now, the name Adam Peaty. Yeah. 100 breaststroke. Uh, Adam's not been beaten for seven years. And he's rewriting the record books on breaststroke. And he's just a, a, a phenomenal story. But outside of Adam, we've got lots of other names. So from Duncan Scott, number one, number one in the world in the 200 free. Tom Dean, number two in the world on the same event, the 200 free. Ben Proud, number three in the world on the 50 freestyle. Luke Greenbank, number four in the world in the 200 backstroke. And there's a few more men. But on the women's side also, we've got um, Abby Wood, number four in the world on the 200 IM and five on the 200 breaststroke. Molly Renshaw, number two in the world on the 200 breaststroke. Freya Anderson going really well in the 100 freestyle, 200 freestyle. And I expect her to make some surprises. And our teams, to show the strength and depth within your team, the men's 4x100 medley relay, 4x200 freestyle relay, and the mixed medley relay have got exceptional chances to medal, but they could win. Yeah, okay, okay, good stuff, okay. As somebody who's competed in the Olympics, what's your kind of main highlights been over the years? Um... I went to five Olympics. The first one, I was like a rabbit in the headlights. I was 18 years of age. I was in Seoul and Korea. And it was like, wow. Just all, all the greatest athletes on earth coming to one place and fighting out was awesome. Just the size of it, the magnitude of it. Uh, then I went to 92 in Barcelona. Uh, I came sixth in the 53. And I loved the experience. For me, my favourite games was, was Sydney in 2000. Just how much Australians are into sport, passionate about sport and the show they put on. But the highlight for me would be opening ceremony, 2008 Beijing Olympics, when I got to carry the flag round at the opening ceremony uh, and lead my team out into the, uh, the Bird's Nest Arena with 85,000 people screaming and shouting. Wow. Obviously, now you're enjoying being on the commentary side of things and the presenting side of things, but do you miss competing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll I, I jump back in there in, in, a, in a minute. Unfortunately, my, uh, my body doesn't do what my brain asks it to do anymore, so... Uh, um, I've retired now for 13 years, so I play an awful lot of golf, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm envious every time I watch the Olympics or, I mean, obviously I've worked for the BBC since retiring now for 12 years. Um, and I love it. I love to be still connected with the sport because I'm so sh passionate about it, but I, I'm jealous of the guys doing it because I just, I had the best time. Brilliant. Mark, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me.